Okay, welcome back, and uh, thank you for your attention, sticking out this long. And we're now rolling into lesson number seven. And again, some of you are still back here on the challenges, probably, on the electronic game, challenging other clubs and all that. Keep going. Remember, there's only two kinds of people in the world, winners and <laughs> losers, and the control over your emotions, you know, how, how you will play to win. Do you, do you cheat? Do you play it by the rules? I recommend playing by the rules, being ethical and moral. But, of course, that's up to you. So, anyway. <laughs> so, number seven goes into the myth about how people say you have to have a high income or it takes money to make money or, you know, how much money do you make? See, it really doesn't make any difference how much money you make. And I'll be explaining why. Uh, now, this is here is the velocity of money, all the breaks you get from cash flow and the government and all this. But... <clears throat> I think the biggest mistake that people make when it comes to money, if this is income, expense, assets, and liabilities, many poor people focus on this. You know, how much income do you make? And it really doesn't matter. And the reason I can say, I, all, all of us know it doesn't matter, because how many times have you heard of... Uh, you know, lottery winners who are suddenly broke, okay? And just last weekend, I was up in uh, Las Vegas at the NBA All-Stars. I do some teaching with the young players because these guys at 18 years old are suddenly, you know, they come from poverty and they're making $10 million a year. And as the NBA Players Association tells them, it says, one day you're ugly and the next day you're the best-looking guy on the block, you know, because <laughs> you're making $10, $10 million a year. So I was in Las Vegas and watching the All-Stars play. There was you know, some of the old, guy, old guys like Michael Jordan and uh, Magic Johnson, who's a great guy. I mean, he's a great real estate developer. I love Magic. And uh, guys like that. So I was watching them, but I was more interested in the, in the, in the crowds at the, around, you know, in the, in the casinos. And these guys are dressed to a kill. <laughs> they, they're, they're bling city, you know. I mean, this, this watches like this. They got the latest shoes on, you know, and the tightest jeans and these overcoats. <laughs> and so, I, and all these women are strutting by, and they got bling hanging everywhere. I'm not even playing because the table stakes are so high. Because the NBA was in town, they raised the table stakes to 100 to 500 bucks, and I'm really a coward. <laughs> well, it's not that. It's I, you know, I, I, I kid myself that I play for entertainment. Secretly, I want to win. But I also know the odds are stacked against me. You know, all those lights in the big hotels are not based, based on people winning. They're based on people what? Losing. Losing. And people go there in droves to give their money up. You know, what I decided to do, the next time I'm going to go there, let's say I'm going to lose, you know, I'm going to lose $500. That's my limit. I'm just going go up to the cashier, turn my $500 in, and say, <laughs> save some time here, you know? <coughs> so anyway, there's a lot of people who want to look like they have a lot of money. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. So they buy the big house, the nice cars, and all that stuff, the bling, the jewelry, and all this, but they're poor as church mice because it's all bought on debt borrow money. Not all of them, but a lot of them are that way. Okay, so looking good and going nowhere, I call it. with them. So the point here is my poor dad always said to me, get a high-paying job, a high-paying job. You know, my, my father, the reason he became a PhD was he could go back to school, get another degree, so he could get a higher-paying job. And unfortunately, the higher-paying job, you just pay more in taxes. That's all. He doesn't get, you don't get ahead with that kind of mentality. So what my rich dad said, your focus should not be on this. Your focus is really on your expenses. This is the most important part of it. The reason I draw this circle here, he called your expense column the crystal ball of your future. He says, I can look at a person's expenses and I can predict the future. For example, when you look at, oh, also what he said, there's only two things you have to spend, really, two things. One is time, 
and one is money. Okay. So when I'm looking at the expenses, I'm looking at where this person spends their time and money. So if I see on the expense, you know, monthly payments for a super duper widescreen television set, and I see lots of Cheetos and Doritos and salsa being bought, and a big easy chair, I know, I can predict the future. <laughs> this person is going to be fat, ugly, and die at 50. You know, because, or if they're eating McDonald's constantly or fast food and all this, you can tell the future. It's what they spend their time and their money on. Do I make sense, guys, here? So it's really easy to see. So what I, what I do instead is I look at where do I spend my time and money. I spend my time, I spend a lot of time on coaches. The reason I have, we have Rich Dad's coaches is because I spend money going to the gym and I have a coach kicking my butt. Does that make sense, guys, here? And it costs me a lot of money, $600 a month. But a, a, a fat and un, unhealthy person will not spend the time and will not spend the money. I spend a lot of money on books, reading. You know, I, I do watch TV, but I, I do a lot of the time to read. So I spend money, time and money on books. Does that make sense to you guys here? Yes. So you can tell my future. I also spend a lot of time on a coach. I have a, other coaches. I have a coach for my, my mental state. I know I'm wacko. <laughs> now, so when I get, how many people ever get, how many people have made a decision out emotionally, like you get angry, you said something, or you bought something impulsively and all that? That's when your emotional intelligence overtakes your mental intelligence. Or when I'm angry at somebody, how many people have been angry at somebody for like a day or two or stuff like that? So <laughs> those are, to me, I have an emotional coach. And that person charges me 400 bucks an hour. But that's what I spend my time and my money on. Does that make sense to you guys here? Because this is my asset here. And the other thing I spend money on for a coach is I have a business coach. Rich Dad was my business coach, my investing and business coach. Donald Trump had a coach called his dad. He spent time studying under his dad. Does that make sense to you guys here? So the whole key to whether you're going to be rich or poor is not how much money you make, but what you spend your time and money on. There's one last thing you spend time and money on is what do you give? You know, how much money do you give to charity? How much time do you give to charity or helping your fellow human beings? I know a lot of people, like my friends, they give a lot of money to charity, but they don't give much time. And I know people who give a lot of time, but they give no money. And so in my experience, a balanced life is giving both time as well as money. That makes sense, guys, here? So that's why I recommend, you know, this product here, Teach to Be Rich. For those of you who are part of this cash flow club and all this, I created this product where you could, so you could learn to teach others. Like, again, if some of you, you know, being rich may never be in your cards. Like Donald says, it might not be in your DNA. But it doesn't mean you can't help your fellow human being. Does that make sense? So in, in here I have a whole more DVDs on more information and a whole workbook because what Donald Trump and I are really teachers. And by, I found out the more I taught, more magic came in. For example, I'll give you, is I really support public television because it's an educational channel. So Kim and I, we paid, we put money and we built this television show. And we then gave our time to operate for pledge breaks. So today, the Rich Dad Company is one of the biggest contributors to public television, both with time and money. We raise a lot of money for them, we give a lot of money to them, and we support their programming. Because we were doing that, I met Donald Trump. You know, if I hadn't done that, I might not have met Donald Trump. Does that make sense, you guys, here? And the reason he and I came together, why we wrote the book, Why We Want You to Be Rich, over here, is simply he and I are teachers. So that's why we have Teach to Be Rich. You know, he and I like teaching because that's way of our way of giving time and by teaching people how to make money. So the, big, the biggest key to your success or not is not how much money you make, but how you spend your time and your money. Does that make sense, you guys? Yeah. And helping your fellow human being, that's where the cash flow clubs are started. Our intent was some people have a lot of money when they come to a cash flow club and some people have very little. The Rich Dad companies objective was to make it available to all people as long as you're interested. If you're not interested, we don't want to force it on you. 
You know, I don't want you to force to eat the Brussels sprouts. You know, <laughs> even though it's good for you, don't eat them. So that's why in step two we talk about more time, more money. Is at this point the commitment say I want to do some coaching, I want further education, because that's what determines your future. This is this is the crystal ball. So you can take a look at what you're doing right now. Obviously, you guys value education. You would not be here. So that's already a statement of where you're doing it in your time. You know, we don't ask for much money here. So the last thing I want to say on time and money, this is the way it looks, especially for uh, you younger people, is I started off with not much money, but I just kept my time studying. You know, I didn't do well in school, but I just kept studying. And then about age 30, started, things started to happen. So I started at age 9, and then it chugged along, and it goes like this. So today, you know, towards, well, let's say I'm 60, that's it. Whereas a person who just went to school and got a safe, secure job and spends her weekends driving their boat and drinking beer and yahooing around, not going to the gym, not getting educated and all this, those are the guys who go like this, but slowly come like this, Towards the end of their life. Does that make sense, you guys? So health, wealth, and happiness, spirituality, you know, sense of your life has some meaning, is all dependent upon the expense column. What do you spend your time and money on? The tragedy is, is I am, I am now at my age meeting friends, and this is the gap. And it all start, stems what you spend your time and your money on. And I learned it from both dads, my rich dad and my poor dad. My, my poor dad was a teacher. He says, you must teach. Give and you shall receive. And my rich dad taught me to give money and be generous. Does that make sense, guys, sir? Yes. So as a general principle with giving and tithing and all that, my rich dad and my poor dad all said the same thing. He says, if you, they want, you want a punch, give a punch. Right? You want a smile, give a smile. That's the rule. If you want money, give money. You want more free time, give more free time. But I meet a lot of poor people who say, well, I give my time, but I don't give my money. So you have a lot of time. <laughs> right? You only get what you give. And if you want more knowledge, teach. The more you teach, the smaller, smarter you become. The more people you serve, the more it comes back to you. That makes sense here? So as a person, I give time as well as money and I teach a lot in my giving of time. So thank you very much. Please take a moment and discuss lesson number seven. And lesson number seven is that, um, excuse me. And so lesson number seven is not how much you earn, it's how well you spend, how smart you are at spending your time as well as your money, okay? Thank you very much.